Parkland. My pleasure to call to order the July 2nd, 2020 meeting of the Planning Recreation Park District Board. And our esteemed general manager will lead us in the pledge. Yep. Thank you, Chair Lane. We rise. Head over your heart. Pray again. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. Yes. I'll move approval of the agenda. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Chair Lang, members of the board. Uh, I actually have not prepared much of an update from the last time we were together. Uh, our our uh, red, yellow, green, uh, what's open, closed, will probably remain the same for another week. And I think it's been that way for three weeks now, I think. So um, even though the governor has rolled back some of the openings, none of them directly affect us. Um, our trails open space remain open. Uh, the parks remain open and the amenities in the parks, the community centers remain closed, except to our own camps and use. And um, the playgrounds remain closed and are closed with signage. Um, Compliance therewith is a little spotty, I would say. Uh, but in, uh, yeah, in, uh, but the, the numbers, the case rate positives are definitely going up in Ventura County and in the state as a whole. Um, and so the health officer is very concerned uh, about things, which is why they have uh, tightened some things down, closed all the beaches, that sort of thing. So, um, with that, staff continues to try to uh, do some fun things, and I think we will wait till the um, Rec and Park Division report to hear about what we're doing that's fun for the 4th of July, that kind of thing. So, <laughs> and, and I do wanna say that this, we are in a, a real 
live boardroom together. We are separated and socially distanced by the more than the adequate number of feet and folks are wearing face coverings, um, you know, to and from. And we actually have, uh, you can't see it on screen, but we have a, a glass wall on the other side of the room and a nice open breezy door. So we're kind of getting outdoor air as well. So we are doing our part in taking precautions. So with that, I'm available for questions. Um, I saw signs on the road saying that Paradise Falls was still closed. I'm wondering if on the 4th of July we're going to close all of Wildwood Park or will Wildwood Park be open but with Paradise Falls being closed? Yeah, we, we don't plan to modify any of the current open space status. So Paradise Falls remains closed, but um, Wildwood itself, all the open space remains open. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I didn't get a chance to read all the details, but in the, the order that came out last night, they, uh, the county announced they were closing, quote, family recreation centers. And I wasn't sure if that affected our pools or not, our pool, I should say. Yeah, so the, um, the pools have their own very specific guidance. And so there's probably, I, there's up to 20 different uh, workplace guidance documents that, that we can follow. And I think we're, operating under probably five or six of them. Um, uh, work, you know, office, work site, pools, separate. Um, the, uh, what else, day camps, um, fitness, and that may be, oh, uh, outdoor museums is some of our partners. And then um, with the theater, the outdoor theater stuff, I think there's some special, anyway outdoor outdoor museum. So, so we have all these different guidance documents to follow. Family Entertainment Center is not one of the ones we do. So they use that as like your, your Chuck E. Cheese, your Dave and Busters, your, your miniature golf, uh, that, yeah, bowling alley, that kind of thing, so. Chair and members, um, the budget is largely what we discussed last, last time. The primary changes are to, to some anticipated reimbursement revenue and some changes in the staffing for the rec division as we learn more about COVID opening, reopening uh, guidelines. Um, it does mean that we need about $60,000 less of the unassigned fund balance than we previously discussed, so that's good news. Um, but we fully expect to come back with further budget adjustments as the reopening guidelines. Uh, impact the rec division. So with that, I'm available for any questions. Any questions of Melissa? Just a, a quick question, Melissa. Um, I know we talked about it, you talked about it at the last meeting and the um, increase that we're gonna have for the unemployment insurance. Um, on the pie chart for the um, general fund expenditures, you have un unemployment insurance broken out separately, but uh, would I be correct that actually that is part of management services? Correct. Okay. Just wanted to show it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Mm Yes, I'd like to 
move adoption of resolution number 070220-A, adopting the fiscal year 2020-2021 budgets for all funds and policy matters contained in the body of and attachments to this memorandum. Resolution to be read and titled only, all future readings to be waived. Thanks, uh, Chair Lang, members of the board. Um, we have a lot of great property agreements and partnerships with uh, the school district, whether for, for property stuff, I know uh, we discussed uh, the use agreements with uh, Rochelle Recreation uh, uh, about a month or so ago. Uh, but with the property agreements, we've got some great formal ones with uh, Futsal at Los Cerritos Middle School, uh, Buyer Park uh, over by Caneo Elementary, and we've got lots of uh, informal agreements or just informal, you know, as we share properties, whether it's at uh, Borchard or Teo, uh, next to the high schools, uh, or next to elementary schools, or Cypress and Glenwood and Kimber, uh, or even uh, we've included the school district when we were developing some of our most recent parks, the Banyan Expansion, uh, Sopwe Trails, and Del Prado. We we'll work very closely with the, the on-site schools as well as the school district to develop those. So we've had some great partnerships and at the end, the community is the one that's been uh, benefiting from these. So, but much like the, the use agreement, which we brought back, like I said, a few, a few months ago, over 30 years, uh, uh, that was a 30 year old agreement. We've got Waverly Neighborhood Park Agreement that was 1973, Kenyatta Agreement, which was 1977, and Lynn Oaks Park, which was in 1982. So like, like the other agreements, these needed to be um, updated. Those, those were really simple ones. These are a little bit longer, about 10 pages, uh, but just kind of uh, updating the language and uh, updating and strengthening our partnerships we have with them. A uh, highlights of the agreement include, each agreement include a 10 year initial term with two five year mutual option terms, uh, agreements and approvals for any future site improvements, i.e. playground replacements, um, on-site signage, acknowledging the cooperative efforts between the school district and the district, park district. And then as we always do, CRPD will permit, use, and maintain the, the properties. Uh, with that, I'm available for questions. So when I was looking at your diagrams, it looks, I already know that Waverly, there is a school there next to the Waverly Park. That on the other two properties, there's not a school on the properties, correct? Correct. Yeah, th those were th back back in the day, back in uh, so those were seventy whatever, yeah, seventies or early eighties. Um, they were reserving the right to use those properties for a future school site. At that time, they said we don't have the the enrollment or you know, the, the the demand for that. So you could use it as a park, and we can take it back um, with proper notification. So there, it was. It's a it's slated for a school site, but it's never happened in forty to fifty years. So, um, is it more beneficial for the park district to just lease that property rather than just outright buy it? Is that um, less expensive for us? Is it beneficial for the school district because we are giving them money on the property? It, well, it's, a, it's a great, it's a great, um, it's a great partnership at the beginning because you know they they reserve by owning it, they reserve the right to build a school on it and uh, we look at it if we weren't maintaining and developing a, if we did develop and maintain a park there um, it, it would just be a vacant lot mm -hmm. so we're basically maintaining with beautiful landscaping for the community benefit their their backyard or their their vacant lot 
So I think it's a good, good agreement for everybody involved. I doubt that the school district is ever going to take it back because I think if anything, our school enrollment is declining, but do we have to leave a certain amount of the property open in case they want to build a school there or can we develop the entire well, we have, a, for um, well, Kenyatta, we have not developed the whole thing because of its most, most of the topography, because okay. it goes, it, it's, it's a severe, that portion in the Northeast just goes straight up like on, on a hill. Um, at Lynn Oaks Park, we have pretty much developed almost the whole thing. Um, and then on, on Waverly, we've developed the, the portions that, that are available. So it's just real, we've developed what we, what we could and taken advantage of it. Thank you. Yeah, First of all, to, to respond to uh, Director Cussworth's concern about costs, I figured a, a dollar per year per property that's probably cheaper to keep the lease rather than try to buy it. My bigger concern rather rather than is the school, might the school district take the property to build a school, which seems totally unlikely. Given the school district's budget woes, is there some possibility that they could decide to treat those properties as excess land and try to sell it. Sure, I mean, they, they could uh, deem it surplus and, and go through the, the, the process of selling a surplus property. Uh, they would have to offer it to public entities first. And that's, we've had, I mean, I'm, I'm three times, I think you might be four times, Jim, where we've had these discussions, not just about these particular properties, but in addition, we have some surplus, and that's, we have some other properties um, that we don't, uh, we haven't developed. So we, we've we've looked at we've gone through this process with the school district before, and at this moment, we feel this is the the best way to best way to do it. Um, the the terms are are ten years that and that was intentional from both parties to have a smaller window than doing a like a fifty year term or a forty year term. Um, so then the the next the board at that time or staff at that time can look at the, the what's going on. But at this moment, we feel this is the best use and the, the best way to utilize the property for both entities. Okay, and I know there was a clause in all three of those agreements, but it wasn't quite clear. Maybe you could just briefly explain if the school district decided to take back the property, um, what becomes of the, the improvements? Well, we had, so when each, each improvement, um, so it's like, so like the big one would be like a playground. Um, uh, if we were to do a, a we were to renovate a playground tomorrow um, and, you know, if we approve this. So I would work together with the school district and, and say, well, what does that mean? And we would look at depreciation, um, you know, a payback, you know, something like that. Because I don't want, because I think that, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, I think it's six months or a year is there uh, what they can give us notice. I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but whatever, let's just say, let's just say it's a, uh, Terminated. Oh, one year. All right. So, so they can give us one year notice. So a playground's uh, about 15 years. So if you know, we sunk $300,000 into a, a playground and then the next day they said, oh, you're right, here's your one year notice. Um, we would, uh, when we did the playground, we'd come to a separate, separate side agreement saying this is the, uh, this is the payback for that particular improvement. But for, for instance, if let's just say um, there was no, it's past the agreement, the playground is 12 years old, um, we would probably just, uh, we would give them to it as is. They would just, hit, you know, the, they, they wouldn't reuse anything. The improvements have been there for decades, you know, decades or more. And that's something with the, the depreciation of the improvements that we put into it are next to nothing. Okay. so to to use your $300,000 example of improvements and the next day they turn around and decide to take the property, then say 299,000, the, the school district would owe the Correct. district 299 or whatever thousand uh, to reimburse for those costs. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, yes. Yeah, and, and I just wanted to kind of add to something that Tom was saying about um, I think that the school district is actually being quite prudent and wise because as we will talk about later tonight in terms of a closed session item, but the, the cost of land just, you know, in this area has seemingly continued to just go up and up and up. And if they are simply land banking this for some potential school need or use, 
I think that's a really wise thing that they're doing um, by retaining the ownership and the right to be able to use that for their purposes if they really need it. Uh, because I, I know it's hard to fathom or imagine how the school district might be in a different position and need to, to actually use it for additional school site use. But I mean, I can just remember just like within the last 20 years, like headlines about LA Unified School District having to build like one school a week for the next four years in order to keep up with the demand that LA was growing at such a rate and that kind of thing. So the ebb and flow of, uh, of growth and no growth is, is one of those things that I think lasts longer than our own lifetimes. And like, I know I always think of the park district as forever. Like when we are doing something, it's like, this is gonna be a park forever you know, like forever. And I, I think the school district's similar to that. So they might land banking something and having it that they might not need it for 50 more years, but they'll be really happy that they had it should it become necessary. So I think it's a great cooperative situation that we're in with, with the school district. Yes, you have your um, I just wanted to clarify one more thing. So we have a 10 year um, lease agreement with them and then the two additional five years. Now, any time within that, so that's potentially 20 years that this could go without really renegotiating the contract per se, right? Um, so if in two years, the school district decides they want to sell it, do at that point, do we still have eight more years in our lease agreement or do they just give us the one year notice? Yeah, well, they have to, um, yeah, they, no, it says they have to, um, yeah, if they want to sell the property, yes, they, they just give a one-year notice. So, it, regardless of this 10 years, oh, yeah. it's just still just a mm -hmm. one-year notice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, a lot of times if you get a lease with somebody, it can be like, we're going to be here for two years or three years, and then that's solid. At so, the end of 10 years, you can renegotiate. But they're saying even within two years, not the 10 years, that they give us a one-year notice. Mm -hmm. and then. They could sell it. Yeah, and, and I, I'm just trying to right, clarify. Sure, yeah, right, their, their intention is, is, is like, if you read the clauses, talk to it, requiring early termination. Like, they have to sell the property. They're not just selling the property because, you know, they just want to sell the property. It's just something that they have to do. Okay. It's, it's all fine. I just wanted to mm -hmm. clarify. And just to let you know, too, the, their, their board um, approved this on Tuesday night. Um, Tom, in reference specifically to Lynn Oaks Park, do I recall on the southwest corner there is a trail access? Yes. Okay. Uh, is that Los Robos? Or? Uh, I'm trying to name name that trail. I think that might be part of the Los Robos system. Yeah. down there but it, it's a uh, very very well used I mean every time I'm there I mean it's it, I mean for, forget COVID you know, two three years ago anytime I'm there there's three or four people coming down and three or four people walking out and I'm there for a half hour so it's very very well used great sounds good are there any additional questions if not I'd entertain a motion Director Tessworth um, I'm making a motion to recommend to authorize the general manager to enter to, into a lease agreement with the Caneo Valley Unified School District for the property at Waverly Neighborhood Park, Kenyatta Neighborhood Park, and Lynn Oaks Neighborhood Park. Thank you. And a second. No second. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? If not, all in favor of the motion and second, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Hearing then that motion will pass. Uh, 9C, amendment to reimbursement agreement with City of Thousand Oaks for resurfacing of district parking lots. Mr. Hare. Thanks, uh, Chair Lang, members of the board. Uh, we we're before you back in April with this, the original agreement between us and the City of Thousand Oaks uh, regarding uh, how we're going to pay them back for the work that their, their contractor is doing for us. Uh, they have exceeded or the not to exceed amount we had was about $690,000 and we've had about an additional $70,000 worth of work over and above the not to exceed amount, mostly due to unforeseen site conditions such as uh, there's more depth in the areas and so th therefore more uh, removal and replacement. 
uh, and tree root repairs. And in addition to that, we added some scope of work, which we did not anticipate. If you remember, we had a project to do the Caneo Creek South Exit Road because the school district said they were gonna build soccer fields back there. And then this, the school district did not award that contract. Uh, they said they tabled that for a few years, but the exit road needed some, um, a lot of love. And so that's instead of, we, we thought we were gonna be replacing, instead we did a lot of repairing to it. Uh, so that was part of the additional um, funding that we, we needed after we had awarded this paving contract. So we do have enough money in the original project plus the Canal Creek South exit road project that we had previously, uh, this uh, board had approved. Uh, with that, I'm available for question. Director Hopper. So does that mean you got rid of all the potholes in that uh, access road? I told you to go check it out. <laughs> I haven't had many reasons to get over there lately. But that's why I told you to check it out, though. No, it's it's awesome. It's smooth. Well, tomorrow it, I will drive over. And it's it's worth. It's worth just just going going down, just make it going around in circles. Just going around in circles. No, it's it's you, you'll love it. It's. it's but no, it's it's yeah, it's really nice. And if you and just just in case you ask, you'd have to call me and ask. So when you come in, you know, you're coming on the west side and you know how you make the, the left before you hit the parking lot, there's about a spot smaller than the size of this room we didn't do because it's in really good shape. So, but it, but it doesn't look as black as the other one. So don't say, why didn't they do that? So we didn't do it because it was in good shape. Yeah. And we expect the report. To and pictures. Report details. Any other questions? Um, I have one, Tom. Has the city or the um, contractor established some kind of baseline, I was gonna say drawings, or better term, I know, uh, of what has been done. So next time in 10, 15 years, we'll have these drawings. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying, this time there were areas that were thicker than what we expected. So all that would be documented? Yes. Good job. And minimize over budget next time. All right, any other questions? If not, um, I'd entertain a motion. Director Hopper. I'd like to move approval of staff recommendation to authorize the general manager to amend the reimbursement agreement for the resurfacing of district parking lots for additional costs associated with the project. Good motion. Is there a second? Director Holt. Thank you, Upper and Holt. Um, any other comments or questions come to mind? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention sharing none. that motion passes. Item 10, reports and announcement, uh, 10A. Park dedication fees, there's a couple of those. It's always nice to see those. Uh, anybody who have comments on the park dedication fees? If not, we're moving on to department reports. Uh, 11A, Park Division, Mr. Hare. Thank you, members of the board. I have no report tonight, but I am more than happy to answer any of Chuck's questions. <laughs> Chuck, do you have any more questions for Mr. Hare? <laughs> and anybody else's questions? I'll report, but look at all the candy they brought up. No, that's my candy. That's your candy? Oh, that's, okay. that's why it's near me. Ah, okay. Okay, 11B, Recreation Division, and check your dais folder. Thank you, Chair Lang, members Michelle. of the board. Um, yes, my uh, James has done an excellent report for you guys. And so I don't have a lot to talk about because there's pictures and all sorts of great things that are going on. As you can see from the pictures and stuff, you know, what we do is changed quite a bit, but still we are offering recreational activities for all. So um, we're really blessed to have such creative staff and um, such a great recreation team that continues to push forward and whatever challenges are put in front of them, they come up with new and exciting ways to do things so that we can continue to serve the community. 
kids are enjoying their camps, um, their new cl fitness classes. There's crazy out of the box thinking going on with the Hillcrest Center for the Arts as all those people are standing in their box. It's the coolest thing to see. Um, Therapeutics is doing a ton. Um, they're actually sold out on all their camps. Um, as you see, Chuck is very busy all the time at the Global Center. I went and stopped by and saw that. We got a great comment from someone that went in and checked out um, a, a lady that was very hesitant to want to go to the program and get the taxes done, but she just raved about it when it felt so safe and, and everything. So there's only about 100 spots left before they're completely full for the taxes. The food program is still going very, very well. They're serving about 150 um, people a day. They have a great um, partnership with cronies um, on some of the stuff that they're doing also. Inclusion, this is the first time we've put some information on our inclusion services about a year and a half ago. You guys really made an effort to make sure that we were doing inclusion and we had budget to do inclusion. And so we really appreciate that. And you can see some of the things that are going on out in the community and how inclusion is being used. And um, we are getting more kids and adults into our programs. Um, on the back, you can see that we are needing more staff because more programs are going on. So I still expect to see that growing. It's um, probably just gonna be at a slow pace because with all the rules and things that are coming out, we're reinventing our programs. So with new rules, new regs and all that good stuff. So we're not able to accommodate as many participants as we have been able to in the past due to the number uh, limitation that we have. Um, there are some fun things planned for uh, Park and Rec's month. So um, th some of them are kind of secrets for staff. So um, you'll find out about them, watch social media, read the acorn, because things will be kind of coming out each week. Um, and I think with that, I'm available for any questions. And Nellie went out and saw some of our, our programs, so she can report out later. Okay, any questions of Rochelle, Director Huffer? Yeah, I know the, the um, community pool's been open for several weeks, and I see the, the lap swimmers out there every morning, which is really neat. Mm -hmm. I seem to recall I asked last time whether there were going to be any instructional swim. Mm -hmm. Is that started or? Yep, okay. that started last week. Last week? I think it was last week it started. Um, so they are doing small group, uh, meaning you have two children, so your two children get to be in a group. Um, there's on social media, there was a picture of one of our staff teaching a one-on-one -on -one class and she has her mask on. They wear either, the staff have options. They either wear a face shield or a mask, depending on what they're doing and how wet they're going to get. But yes, there is private lessons going on. And there is, I believe, some child, parent-child classes. It's not the baby and me ones, but they're classes actually that the staff is teaching from the pool deck. And the child might be five or six, but the parent is in the pool with the child to make sure that they're safe. Okay, so, thank you. Yeah. And I'm, I've been enjoying watching the, uh, when I take a break, watching the tween group, yes. their water fights and. <laughs> Therapeutics actually, so talking about reinventing things, the Global Center is currently just occupied by the food program and the, and the tax program. So we needed um, a place to put our therapeutics programs because we're not using um, any of the school sites or other places that we would normally use in the summer. And um, so Patty opened up her facility. And so one of the tween camps is being run out of the Global Center and they're, they went on like a virtual uh, tour of an aquarium the other day. The, the staff are just getting so creative. So they can't go anywhere with the kids. So they're doing virtual things with the kids. So, and they were having a blast. Sure. And I, I did have one additional question. Um, any updates on, on what local sports groups are, are doing or able to do with the fields and? Sure, well, we are currently allowing um, our sports groups to rent for fitness and for camps. So our current groups that are with us on a regular basis are in our allocation. They've all been notified on what they need to do in order to get back on the books. 
And so we've been starting to get some folks turning in the paperwork. So I think last time I checked with Dana, which was earlier this week, there were maybe two, I think it was ASO 9 and maybe Newberry Park Pony Baseball that had um, turned in their stuff and were back on the fields. But yeah, so once yeah, they have I, all I know stuff, a lot of the youth groups are really struggling trying to figure out what the heck they're going to do in the coming weeks and months. So yeah, it's only for camp or fitness. So really, they've got to be within and they have to get their, um, I'm going to say it wrong, attestation with the county and they have to provide their work plan, their plan to us so that we know they have it and that their number of what their attestation um, approval was. So once they have all that, then do, do they have does the group have to provide that to to you before okay mm -hmm. right. yep and then we have some additional waivers and um the paperwork that they have to sign also i think it's two forms and then they have to provide what their plan is and show proof that they've completed their attestations okay thank you we're good mm -hmm. any other questions uh rochelle <clears throat> when you say fitness mm -hmm. um does sports team getting in condition fall into that category? Yes. Okay, because I drove by the Oak Brook neighborhood park the other day and there's a bunch of looked like high school football players, you know, lined up proper uh, distance, social distancing, but doing some exercises and so forth. So. Yeah, strength Great. training and conditioning is included in that. Um, I will tell you that probably most of what you're seeing out in the parks is not through us right now. So we're trying to get all of our folks back into the system so that they have their permits and stuff. Mm -hmm. So there's, it just takes some time. Yeah, this is Pedersen and Herbs. I drove through and they all lined up. Look, good. 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 Yeah. yeah. I think our, our sports groups and organizations really want to get back. So they're making they're making their adjustments that they need to make too, so yeah. Good job, good job. All right, if there are no additional comments or questions, uh, we're moving on to management services after a big report earlier. Michelle? Um, I have no report, but I'm available for questions. Sounds like somebody else. Uh, As you say, you've been well trained. <laughs> Okay. By the way, has anybody heard how she's doing? Oh, how nice. Good for you. That's sweet. All right. Well, next time you see her, say hi for me. And... All right. Uh, 11D, General Manager's Report. Mr. Friedel. Yes, thank you, Chair Lang, members of the board. We do have the need for a closed session after this, and Mark has figured out how to magically have us in a closed session, but still have Zoom, and, and we will have a, an attorney, um, and I'll announce it, Zooming in. So that's kind of fun and new, and hopefully we won't be actually broadcasting to the whole world. But <laughs> that's the, <laughs> so that's the, uh, we do have a need for that. Um, just a few things that have happened since we've last met. Um, as you know, I'm a member of the uh, Capri Board of Directors, and which is the California Association of Park and Rec Indemnity. So we handle the pooled insurance for about 60 different districts, all rec and park. And one of the things Capri does is inspect um, different agencies. They come out and they do sort of an audit of your risk management practices. So. They, they do that about once every two to three years. And when your district has that process, you kind of get a score and they evaluate, you know, uh, probably two very detailed single spaced aspects of the district. And if you, um, if you are, I guess, high enough in the score, you become an outstanding rec and park <laughs> district. So I get to present this to the board chair of Caneo Rec and Park District from the Capri board, you have earned a, uh, a nice plaque. Whoa, Outstanding man. performance. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you, Capri. So that's from Capri. Um, and then I will tell you, sitting on the Capri board, we are going to raise your rates significantly. Uh, <laughs> 
no, in, in all seriousness, the, uh, the, the property related claims are starting to come home to roost. Um, uh, you know, um, we're, we're in a, in a pool that, um, actually we buy layers of insurance, you know, you know, the first 250 to a million, then a million to five then five to 10, you know, so that you buy these layers and the, exposure gets broader and broader so in the, at the end of the day we're basically in the insurance pool that is international we're lloyds of london and that kind of stuff um and the incidence of property loss men, much of it arguably climate change related um the the more destructive big hurricanes um that kind of stuff are uh, those losses are starting to, and the flooding, that kind of stuff is starting to um, uh, affect rates. So the rates will be going up significantly. And then the the, um, the liability rates are going up as well. The good news is that workers comp is actually providing, um, uh, Capri has a, a, a kind of rebate program and we're actually lowering the workers comp rates. So the workers comp exposure and experience has been great, which is, which is great. So that's what is going on with our insurance. Uh, I'm going to not mention anything about the Costco board, assuming Chuck will. Okay, so then Lang Creek, um, Page Lane. Uh, Tom and I took a tour of Lang Creek and Page Lane from, you know, we're going to build Canal Creek Southwest on the west side of the 23 up to Jantz Road. There's a, there's a nice oak studded creek along there. So we did that with Caltrans and Watershed Protection District, City of Thousand Oaks, someone from the county's homeless uh, group. Um, and we were there. I'm not sure, am I forgetting any organization? Yeah. Oh, and the sheriff, yeah. Um, and took a tour and there is a significant um, homeless uh, encampment along that strip. It's about a mile long. so. Um, you know, we're, we're cooperating and working closely with uh, other agencies to kind of address some of that stuff. Um, and I will be attending the homeless ad hoc committee meeting by Zoom on Monday at the city to kind of continue those discussions. Um, on the state budget, and I didn't know if you were going to mention anything, but it, it doesn't really necessarily affect the Canal Rec and Park District. There wasn't any, um, if, if you recall from the the scary days um, of yore, if the state wanted to borrow money from special districts, it could do so with a two thirds vote and all that kind of stuff. So right now there's no plan for that to happen, which is great. Um, uh, and otherwise um, we're not as so directly connected to the state that that uh, their budget is, is impacting us too much. Um, not on the good side either, we didn't qualify for the state uh, level CARES Act funding that I think it's CARES, I can't remember which one, but um, related to COVID. Uh, just so you know, the, the Play Canal, Tom is, I think, vice chair, I think. Um, um, they got us together, Play Canal board got the Play Canal board together after, a, I don't know, six months or something. So it's good. We actually, if able, will try to do a prom again in 2020. One, but who, who knows if that'll be possible. Um, but Play Canal continues to um, raise funds and do work to help the park district. And the last thing I'll leave with before, again, closed session for me is that we will be gather, gathering all full-time staff together on a Zoom meeting next Wednesday to just kind of talk about um, COVID and the experience of staff in the field now that people are, you know, starting to come back and interact with the public and, you know, offer all the different cool things REC is doing. So we'll be having a conversation with staff about that. So with that, I am available for questions. Thank you, Mr. Friedel. Yes, Director Kessler. <clears throat> so I was just wondering about the whole insurance with Capri. So you said that the, um, claims were coming up now it's property claims so is this property claims that other rec and parks are making or is this property claims of people that are making them against rec and parks and then you mentioned hurricanes you said that this is kind of an international and national association is there anything here that's happening that we are getting claims for or so for, i guess my first question is 
is this Reckon Park making claims against Capri or is this property owners that are making claims against the Reckon Park that we are being insured for and then where are these claims claims coming from and our, is our own Reckon Park getting claims? So what I was referring to is the property losses, not like liability claims. So the property losses and, and the kind of damages that occur, uh, we have been a beneficiary and have made claims because of the Woolsey and, and uh, Hill fires. Um, and so did our two neighbors, our Pleasant Valley and Rancho Simi. And the uh, Paradise Rec and Park District is uh, in the pool. So, you know, they've got, they got totally decimated. So our own pool had quite a few fire related claims in the last fire season or two fire seasons ago. Um, so we've had our own increase in claims. And then when I refer to the broader um, damages, um, it's, it's, it's literally we're in these giant insurance pools. When we buy a, a different layer, we're just buying it among, you know, this whole big pool. So a hurricane and the property damages the companies pay out, eventually that loss gets recovered through the layers that we already buy into. So it's kind of true for every, all of us that buy any insurance, you know, you kind of aren't isolated from the rest of the world so much anymore. So so property losses are, are, have been significant. Yeah. Any additional questions? Um, I'm sorry, I thought there was something else I had on my mind associated with what you reported, but. All right, we're moving on to uh, item 11E, director's report and follow-up reports on meetings and conferences attended. Director Hupper. Yes, thank you, Director Lang. Um, as, as Mr. Friedel mentioned, uh, we did have a Costco meeting on uh, June 24th. Uh, Director Nichols and I attended representing the Park District in person. The city representatives were connected by Zoom and Mr. Friedel showed up unexpectedly and didn't have a place to sit, but otherwise we were all properly spaced. But <laughs> um, the, the two major items that were uh, on the agenda and worked on. The uh, first was, uh, I think it was an addition of, was it 58 acres in uh, of open space in uh, Dos Vientos that uh, I can't remember the name of the company that that owns that property, turning it over to, to Costco, but that's, that was approved and is- Miller, Miller Brothers? Well, it, it's now the not Oh, yeah. okay. So uh, that was that was taken care of, and then the uh, second item was the discussion on the uh, Edison funds, um, and rather than any specific recommendations or decisions, the the step that the Costco board took at the uh, June twenty fourth meeting was uh, staff had presented a proposal with um, percentages uh, going to about a half dozen different categories of projects without any specifics at this point. And so the, the Costco board approved those allocations and I thought I was gonna be able to pull it up, but apparently I can't do that from here. But anyway, it's, it's, it's gonna be a multi-step process where the, the detailed projects will come one by one, but it was, because we're an open space agency, at least in my opinion, I think uh, Director Nichols agreed that all of the projects were, were very closely related to the losses that were suffered from the fires. So, um, you know, I, I think there are gonna be some exciting things going yeah. on from Costco in the coming year or two or three. Sounds good. Any other director's uh, reports? Director Kesswitz? Uh Yes, so um, as Rochelle mentioned, I did go over to Borchard and it was uh, very well organized. Kids looked like they were having fun. I talked to some of the people there and lots of kids were there. And as I mentioned to Rochelle, a lot of the parents were talking. I think they enjoyed getting out and talking to other parents. You know, that's probably something that they've needed to do. <laughs> like how, how are you dealing with the kids at home and things? So. I'd say it was highly successful. Um, 
really nice. And the um, staff that was working there was very enthusiastic, very positive. I would think a child would want to come. Bright, happy rooms. So great job there. And then um, I had a neighbor down the street, and she had decorated her porch up for Fourth of July. They actually always decorate their porch. And they have Welcome to My Porch. <laughs> and they should have entered the contest. CRPD put on a contest. I actually saw it in Caneo Guide and went to look at it to see if my neighbor had entered their porch. But they hadn't. I, I don't know them. They're like a few streets down. I was almost going to knock on their door and say, you should enter your porch. You've got a great porch here. But it did motivate me to decorate my porch because I thought with all the things that my family's not getting this year, maybe they'll like it. When my son came over today to play Frisbee golf and go to the beach, that's why I was a little late. I thought I should take a shower before I came after the beach. But um, he walked up and he goes, oh, this looks really festive. So I think not too many people participated, but it was a really cute idea. And maybe if it keeps going on, it will grow. You know, it might be fun for people to go around and see decorated porches for the fourth. I thought it was a great idea. I now have six hikes in from the Costa Challenge, so I'm glad that you told me about it. So yes, I was up at the, the Lake Eleanor hike, which I'd never been on before. It's always exciting for me when I've done so much hiking to when I find a hike that I've never been on before. So uh, the, I think the Costa Challenge is really good on that for people who are actually very avid hikers to kind of introduce them to some things they might not have seen. And I thought it was going to be a highly boring hike, but um, beautiful views of the Las Virginis Reservoir, incredible rock formations that I don't think you could really see unless you were on that trail. So um, I took a couple of my friends with me. They were equally impressed. So um, hooray for Costca, also coming up with great ideas. And, and then I did a Zoom meeting with the uh, Stagecoach and Museum and they're, you know, continuing on over there. Very good, thank you. Director Holt, do you have a report? No. Okay, um, on a couple of topics that you mentioned about the decorate the porch, years ago, maybe 20, I think maybe Jim was here, the uh, Park District had a Christmas uh, decorating contest, and then they had a uh, English double-decker bus go around and, and check out all those that uh, entered the contests. And I think we did a halfway break over at Orchard and so forth. Um, is that something that we might consider again in the future? Okay. Um, Jim, were you here during that time? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember. Uh very fondly some of it and also i remember the uh, the for that particular bus the diesel smoke was like i was upstairs in the out, outer thing and the exhaust was like circulating through the up, upper deck and it was like 30 degrees that night or something it was yeah. freezing that night but uh, the hot cocoa was awesome and it was it was cool it was actually really cool that that's i was judy and i were down inside so i didn't yeah. experience the <laughs> diesel smoke but uh yeah, we thought it was a neat kind of experience and a lot of singing and so yeah, forth. Yeah, that was awesome. So when uh, Director Cutsworth mentioned that uh, uh, decorating porch, that came to mind. Um, Rochelle, on the current camps and so forth, are you uh, planning and are is taking reservations for additional uh, camps back, I mean, out into September? We have camps going all the way until August. We're not sure what's going to be happening once school goes back. Uh -huh. um, we have just recently started some conversations um, in regards to some possible opportunities to complement what the school might be doing. Mm -hmm. So um, that will, it's rolling out, we're thinking right okay. now so we're not sure what it's going to look like but we, we are hoping that we will be able to 
again, our programming is probably going to change. It's not going to be the same as it was. Right. Um, school's changing, so but we're looking to be able to complement whatever the school does and be able to help parents with whatever needs they they have in order to get to work and stuff like that. So we're just trying to figure it out and see what options we have that make financial assist uh, financial sense that is at least a break even. So no, the school district hasn't. Uh, come to a decision on whether they're going to start up um, this fall or not? No, yeah, they're, they they're going back in the fall, and I think that the decision that was made is they're going to have two co cohorts, an AM and a PM cohort uh -huh. of kids, but um, I haven't seen anything in personally in writing that that's for sure yet. So, okay. Yeah. I, I'm assuming that you're involved with the school district, but I just was mm -hmm. curious as to the chance. Okay. I, I think it still requires some some final board approval, but that's that's the the concept that the board has approved. So homeschool. Yeah. Okay. So I haven't seen the acorn yet today. You had your hand raised. Well, yeah, because you were asking about how we might be reacting to that, and and with the AM and PM, one of the comments that was made in the article was, parents are going to be in a world of hurt because their kids are going to be out of school for half a day and what, and what what do they do with their kids? Mm -hmm. So if there's some way that the park district can, mm -hmm. you know, add some programs, uh, programs for kids who are part of the AM or PM cohort. We have a meeting on Tuesday. Oh, is it a meeting with the school district or just, because yeah. one of the things they mentioned, which I can understand is they don't really have room at the school mm -hmm. to keep everybody right. for after school programs. Right. So there's yeah. definitely challenges and we're trying to identify those and work through them. Uh, transportation, getting kids mm -hmm. from school sites to our locations. Are they going to walk? Bus doesn't seem to be an option because a 84 passenger bus can only fit 14 kids on it now type of thing. So we're, you know, can parents pick up their kids and then bring them to us? I mean, even for parents, think about this. Your kids used to go to school for six and a half hours a day. Now they're going for two and a half hours. I didn't pay for childcare before. And now I have to pay $400 a month for childcare. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of obstacles, but we're really looking at being able to have some options for parents. So, you know, ultimately they get to decide what best for their families so and is, is safe passage possibly going to could be involved in some of this because i mean mm -hmm. that's, that's an obvious group of kids whose whose parents need need the help and they're already oh, in in the the frame of mind of walking from school to mm -hmm. our center and then from the center to home yeah i'm sure whatever ends up happening a safe passage will be included into it just like they are included into camp and stuff like that and so that will be a matter of what funds are there to fully pay for those things so okay but yeah they'll be included in trying to figure it out sorry i interrupted for you with no. your times so. no, that's the good information and I'm, i see a real need being uh service taken care of by the park district and mm -hmm collaboration with the schools so that's great yeah. you know, no, I, th I think, I think uh, what we do at our centers is going to change and the new norm is going to be different and, and we're not going to be in schools doing after school programs because they're not going to have people in there so we're going to be doing more at our facilities so very good mm -hmm. okay um, just real briefly um, I've had a busy last month july with two santa monica mountain conservancy meetings and two mrca meetings all in one month normally it's one and then we started off the yesterday with mr two mrca meetings um and um uh, that play and catch video um that you most likely pardon yeah good job and I thought it was kind of ironic where Al Adams started the whole thing off passing a football. And then, <laughs> and, and then uh, I, yeah. one of my ideas was catch a football. So it's kind of connect to the beginning and the end. Yeah. So uh, yeah, a very good video. I sent it to a few friends and they had a lot of positives. So 
Good. Yeah. Good Thanks idea. to Kurt for putting that together at Borchard. His, we have learned that Kurt is very handy with some video splicing and stuff. So he's our go-to person now. Yeah. He and Tim were fun to work with. Good. Okay. No further comments or questions. Item 12, request for status reports for items and for subsequent agendas. Uh, item 13, items from the public, no public. Item 14, executive closed session, and we've been informed there is a need for that. Mr. General Manager. Yeah, thank you, Chair Lang and members of the board. Um, is Mark on just, or is there some process to, okay, so you're getting him queued up. So while we're waiting for that, um, we have on the agenda two listed closed sessions. One is not necessary.